Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to our first week, I think, our first week of Creative Kickoffs. And of course, my first one for sure. So I think we didn't do them last week. So yeah, first week of Creative Kickoffs. And it's a new thing we're doing here at Adobe Live. And of course, I'm doing it on my channels as well. So welcome people from all over the world. Welcome to all the various channels you're watching us on. Uh, thanks for joining me here on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and, and X and, of course, the one and only Behance. Uh, so what's a creative kickoff? It's just a shorter slot, so it's not an hour. It's only 30 minutes, so about 25 minutes of actual content. And we're going to be doing uh, these kickoffs Monday through Thursday every week. Uh, in the various disciplines. So you'll see video, you'll see uh, design, you'll see Photoshop, which is Wednesdays, Photoshop Wednesdays. And of course, on Thursdays, I believe is Express. I can't remember, but I think it's Express on, on Thursdays. So um, creative kickoffs designed to be 9 a.m. Pacific time. So it would kick off a West Coast morning. But I know like for me, it's noon. For other people, it's probably afternoon or evening. So with that said, it's either going to kick off your morning, your afternoon, or your evening. One or the other. We didn't say it was a morning kickoff. We said it was a kickoff. All right. So with that said, I just decided for this first one, since it's on Photoshop, I'm just going to go ahead and make it uh, Photoshop tips and tricks, like just some random, like literally a list of tips that came to my mind over the last couple days that I jotted down in no particular order. I didn't prioritize them. I just, as they came to mind, I went ahead, went ahead and put them down. So some of these you may know. I guarantee there's at least one or two you probably don't know because I like, I dug deep and tried to find some things that nobody knows or you forgot about. Let's put it that way. Uh, and we're just going to go through them one by one. And I'm also going to save some time towards the end, so I may not do it. Uh, I'm not going to do it all on desktop. I'm going to show you some things on the iPad as well that are brand new, like literally brand new, that probably didn't get any love because they came out towards the end of the year last year, and it was holidays, and people just kind of didn't even think about it. All right, so with that said, without further ado, without further explaining, let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to switch over to my desktop so you can see what I'm doing here. I've got Photoshop open. And, and I will throw in bonus tips along the way, and I'm about to do my first one as a bonus tip. It's not on my list, but it's one of the things that drives me crazy, uh, or it drives people crazy when they don't know the difference. So when you open Photoshop for the first time, you get kind of like this welcome screen. It's got tips and tricks. It's got your recent files. It's got all kinds of cool things in it. It's the home page. Well, little do, you, little do people know that if you go in the upper left-hand corner and click the actual Photoshop icon, that will toggle you to the interface. And so you don't have to open a document or create a new document just to get to, a, to the interface. You can just click that icon. I've shown this before, but I just want to, I was reminded of it as I was on that home screen. If you want to get back to the home screen, that's what the home icon is for. Also in the upper left corner to just quickly go back home. So you can toggle back and forth between those two. Now that I've done that, let's go ahead and get into our first image. I think it's going to be this backpack image and this backpack image I've used before. I've shown before a couple of images I've shown before, but a lot of times I, I bring up an old image that I've shown before to show you new ways to do the thing I showed you last time. So, and this, this is no exception. So we're going to use the new remove tool to remove this backpack that we used to use content aware fill or the patch tool or any of those other tools to do it on. So I just want to show you the difference in what this can do, but, one of the things I always run into is people, well, where's my patch tool? I don't see it. Yours is exposed. I don't see mine. That's another tip is that I've created a custom toolbar with not only the tools that I use the most, but the tools that I want to see in the order I want to see them in because some tools I don't use at all. Some tools I don't use as much. So I keep my most frequently used tools at the top on the way down. So how do you do that? You go up to your edit menu, you come down to toolbar and you can design your own toolbar. So for example, all the tools on the right hand side, I have removed from my toolbar because I, I, I can't remember the last time I had red eye in a photo and needed the red eye tool. So uh, why do I need this on my toolbar? But if I did need it for some 1989 photo that I found, I could just go ahead and drag that in 
and put it in the order that I wanted it, and it's immediately reflected in your tool panel. So where did I put it? I put it under the elliptical marquee, and it's there it is. The red eye tool is right there. It's under the marquee tools. So um, I, I, I don't use that tool ever. So let's go ahead and move that off. And then once you create your own toolbar, you can just click done, but I wanna make sure that you click save preset because another tip, people upgrade to a brand new version of Photoshop. And it's like, well, what happened to all my custom toolbars? Because it doesn't bring them over automatically. But if you save that preset and name it, you can always open that toolbar back up. You can even save it to a different drive, a backup folder or whatever and always have your custom toolbar. So in my case, I have put the new, um, where is it here? The new, 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 there we go. The new remove tool, I've separated it out from its group and I also broke out the spot healing brush and the healing brush separately. Now, you can also group them together because I really don't use the healing brush that often, but I do use it sometimes. So I'm gonna group it underneath the spot healing bar. And that way it's part of a group now making my tool panel shorter. So that's that makes it a fly out. So if I wanna use it, I have to, oh, I gotta get out of this first. Then I gotta go ahead and say that I wanna use the healing brush. So that, that I, instead of making it a separate tool, taking up a space, I put it, I grouped it with the spot healing brush. So the tip there is creating your own custom tool panels. You can make as many as you want and fire them up for whatever you do. So for example, they can also be part of your workspaces. So if you switch to a custom workspace, it could also activate a custom tool panel. So if I'm retouching a photo, I might want my retouching tools. If I'm doing graphic design, I might want my favorite graphic design tools like the, um, the frame tool and the text tools and all of those tools up top. So whichever toolbar you need can also be associated with your um, your custom workspace. All right, so with that said, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the new uh, remove tool and we're gonna get rid of this backpack that someone left behind. I'm just gonna paint it. And when I let go, like magic, it's like it was never there. Now, a lot of people question this particular tool. They're like, is this using generative fill? Are those pixels mine? Uh, uh, is this counting towards my generative fill credits whenever those are activated? No, it's not using any of that. This is a standard Photoshop tool that does not use generative fill in any way whatsoever. So it's using the surrounding pixels, just like the other, the patch tool and the healing brush do. It's just a better tool at it. So it's using AI, yes, but it's not using the generative AI. It's not using generative fill to do that. So, hey, Sam, uh, I see a bunch of people from Adobe here. Sam's here, Claudie's here, Torrin's here. And those are the names I saw so far. And also thanks for the kudos on my year end tech video. That was a lot of fun to put together. And I like doing those at the end of the year. Sorry, I hadn't done one for a couple of years, but you know, pandemic, that kind of thing. Anyway, moving on. Uh, general fill credits are going to be only on a certain amount we can do soon. So general fill credits, you'll learn more about that soon. Don't worry about it right now. And if you're a Photoshop user, you probably won't have to ever worry about it period, when I mean worry, like it won't be a concern, it'll just be a thing, you'll keep generating and you'll just keep using it. So thanks for that question, Kramer over on YouTube. All right, uh, let's keep going. All right, so I just wanted to show you that tool because now I'm gonna show you a tip with that tool. And this is actually a tip that Victoria showed me. Um, uh, I gotta give her credit every time I use this because it, it, it's, it's really fun that I can do it this way. So I've shown this this particular photo I took in Red Rock Canyon a hundred times. And every time I show it, I show you how to remove that light using a new technology. So no different, we're gonna remove that light, that light stand, the backpack, the whole nine yards using the, um, the remove tool. However, here's the problem and this is the tip. If I wanna use the remove tool to remove this and I start, I'll make my brush bigger and I start painting it. Okay, great, I'm painting it. And I got it like, okay, I wanna make my brush smaller for the pole, so I let go. Then it kind of starts doing its thing. And I don't want it to do its thing yet, I'm not done. So let me undo that. 
And let me switch to my one of my favorite remove tool options. Thanks, Victoria, for showing me this. Uh, remove after each stroke. Uncheck it at the top of the screen. If you uncheck it, then you can paint like I'm doing here. I'm getting the whole top of this light stand that I took out with me on, on, the, uh, on location. Great, and I can let go. See, I let go. I'm not painting anymore. Then I can make my brush smaller and I can do the other things I want to do, like the pole. There we go. Great. And I can let go. And I can make my brush bigger. And I can do the, the backpack now. So if you got a lot to remove and you want to do it in one step and you got a lot of brushing to do, this is extremely helpful because you can get it all brushed in. I don't know if I did that pull pretty straight or not. But anyway, I get it all brushed in. And then when I'm done, I can click the check mark or the commit button and say, yep, I want to remove all of that. And it just does it. I missed a spot in the sky, but that's okay. Because now it's gone. All right. So remove tool. Awesome. I showed you how to put it on your tool panel. I showed you how to move it up on your tool panel. I showed you how to make it so it doesn't do it with every brush stroke. You can turn that on and off whenever you want. And I want to show you one more thing with it. Let's see if I've got an image here. This one. So, yeah, and we'll make our, let's say I want to remove one of these, um, these zip lines. Like this one has got a person on, and there's a whole lot of retouching this photo needs. They're like, you can't even see the person. But, you know what, let's fix that first. All right, so <laughs> let's go to the filter menu. Let's come down to Camera Raw Filter, which I was going to show you anyway. Camera Raw Filter is my favorite filter for people that are new to Photoshop because it's the same Camera Raw that's built into Lightroom and Lightroom Classic and Camera Raw. And it's easier. It's just a lot easier to do things than curves and levels and adjustments and exposure and all the things you used to do manually that were hard in Photoshop are a lot easier in camera in the camera raw filter. And had I done a smart filter layer first, it would even be non-destructive. But this is just a quick tip, so I'm not worried about that. All right, so I'm going to hit auto and I'm also going to bring up the, uh, in the light panel, I'm going to also bring up the shadows so we can actually start to see that person. There we go. Now that's a big difference, night and day. So now I click OK and it's done. And had I done it as a smart filter layer first, which is under the filter menu, convert for smart filters, then I would be able to go back in, make more adjustments, turn it off, delete it, whatever, and it would be non-destructive. I'm not worried about it because I'm not trying to, that's not the tip. All right, but anyway, uh, let's say I want to get rid of the zip line. Well, we saw that I wasn't really straight in painting that pole. Another bonus tip is that if you're using the remove tool and you uncheck the remove after each stroke, when you do one, so let's say I do this, I let go, I now hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I come all the way down here and click, it will draw the line for me. So that is a way to get a straight line of any brush stroke that you want. You first do a stroke, hold down the shift key, go all the way to the other end and click, and that will give you that long, that that perfectly straight, um, and it might not be thick enough, but it'll at least give me that perfectly straight um, remove. And like I said, it wasn't thick enough, but there you go. All right, so I can go in and just fix the couple areas that I need, and <laughs> let me turn that off for a second, because it's gonna bug me that it's there. There we go. There we go. And then we need to also get rid of the rest of the person there. There we go. Boom. So now we got our star on the zip line. I've never been on a zip line. I don't know if it's fun. People say it is. Some people say it's boring. You'd be the judge. But anyway, we got our one person on the zip line. So that was a bonus tip. Just doing remove in a straight line. And if you don't have the remove after each stroke unchecked, you can't use that hold down the shift key and do it because it does it and forgets about it and it doesn't ever register that you did the first one so you can do the second one. So you have to uncheck that in order to do that straight line on this particular tip. Okay, uh, how can I get a free Photoshop from you, sir? 
um, you can't. <laughs> I don't have free Photoshops to give away. All right, so with that said, let's keep going. Let's close this. Actually, we'll keep it open. Let's go to our next one, which is going to be, we did that, we did that, we did that. Uh, let's move on to this next photo, which is actually a real case scenario, this photo right here. I took this photo for a client, and of, of the hundreds of photos I took for this client, they liked this one, and I was ticked off at myself because I cropped off her foot. Like, I literally just cropped in too tight with the camera. Her foot is, just the tip of her toe is cropped off. And it bugged me. So I was like, ah, ah, they want this photo. And I cannot, as a, in good conscience as a photographer, give them this photo with a toe cropped off, even though they, they liked all the rest of it. So we're gonna use Generative Expand to fix this and we're gonna do a couple of things with it. So first, let's go to our crop tool, hit the letter C to go to the crop tool. And one of the things I always like to do when I give people portraits as their final edit, I like to always crop them, even if I don't have them not fixing something, I always like to crop them to a four by five aspect ratio. So up at the top in the crop tool, switch it to four by five, because that will always post perfectly on Instagram. If you're ever posting a portrait on Instagram, Instagram's got this weird stuck in the in the 1900s that it needs to be four by five aspect ratio or it's gonna make you crop parts of it. So I just go ahead and do that for them up front. So there's my four by five aspect ratio, which is obviously too short for this, this photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand it. And I'm also gonna expand it past where the toe would be. And I'm also gonna move it up a little bit as well. Let's go expand it up a little bit because we don't want to be right on top of her head. And now using generative expand, generate, it will not only generate the pieces I'm missing on the left-hand side and the bottom, but it should put back in a foot. Let's see if it works because I'm going to be just as surprised as you are because I never know exactly what I'm going to get with the wonderful world of generative fill and generative expand. And there's my foot. Great. Let's see which one I like best. So I always get three. I like that one better than the first one. And I don't know. I think I kind of like that one best of all. Let's see. The second one. Uh, it's just different shadows. And the third one. Yeah, I like the shadows on the third one best. Now, there's a little bit of darkness going on over here. I'm okay with that because it kind of creates a mood for the photo. But you could go ahead and blend that in with the patch tool or any number of tools because that is a separate layer right now. So you can go ahead and apply different things to it to blend that in. But that's how I restored the foot on the, this image isn't finished being retouched, but on the retouched version of the photo, that's how I restored the foot so that I could give her her foot back that I cropped off in the photography um, part of this. All right, uh, let's do, uh, while we're here, um, you'll notice that you have this contextual taskbar that pops up depending on what you're doing. So usually it pops up, if you don't see it right away, it will usually pop up when you make any kind of selection. So when I make a selection, there it is. And you notice it moved. It moved to, it always moves to where it is that you've highlighted or selected on your canvas. So in this case, um, uh, da, 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 da. So wait, uh, wait. Someone's asking. Wait. So the so was the shot was the foot always in view capture, and just cut off in the final shot? No, it was cut like literally cut off in that particular frame of the shot that I took. I have other shots that have her foot, but this one did not, and this is the one she wanted. That makes sense. So literally, if you lift the camera up and you cut off a foot, it's not in the photo. It's not there. This brought it back. All right, so anyway, back to the contextual taskbar. So the contextual taskbar always pops up near where you are selected. If I want it out of my way, let's say I always want it over here or at the bottom, like it's not in the way, I, I know what it's applying to. Then there's a menu option on the uh, three dot menu that you can go in and say pin to pin bar position. So that means keep it where it is whenever possible, don't move it. 
So that way, it, no matter what I select, it will always be at the bottom. So even if I'm selecting stuff over here, it's at the bottom, I'm selecting stuff up here, it's at the bottom, it doesn't move around the screen. Some people, it drives them crazy when it moves around the screen. I'm used to it, but just so you know. All right, uh, making sure that I'm not missing a question. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, Mel and, and people are asking, do you know when we're going to be charged uh, for generative credits? Well, charged is a different way of saying it, but I wouldn't say you're going to be charged. Do I know when they're going to take effect? Yes, I do. Can I tell you? No, I can't. I can't tell you anything more about generative credits than you can find out on adobe.com because I'm not allowed to. All I can tell you is don't worry about it right now. <laughs> it's, it's not happening right now. Don't worry about it. All right. So anyway, um, don't ask me any more about generative credits because I'm just going to tell you the same thing. Let's move on. So uh, next up, this one's going to be kind of a fun one. And the time is already flying by. So let's open up this one. All right. So this was a case where uh, this athletic jump wasn't athletic enough. They wanted more leg, like more leg pull back. So I thought, OK, how can I quickly do this? Uh, or effectively do this. So I'm going to use the contextual taskbar and say select subject. That will give me a selection of her, not the background. Now I'm just going to uh, hit Command J on Mac, PC con Control J, and that will duplicate it onto its own layer. So I can turn off the background right now. Now that I got this on its own layer, and uh, we're, we'll come back to the yellow in a minute, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to Edit Menu and come down to Puppet Warp. Puppet Warp's not new, it's been here for a while, but I'm gonna go ahead and just click and add pinpoints for where I want to adjust the puppet. Now, even though I'm not making any adjustments on the right leg or the leg on the right side, I'm, I'm using these pinpoints as anchors so it doesn't move. If I didn't anchor these points on this side, the whole thing would turn when I do this. So now I can actually move her leg <laughs> don't do that but I can that would hurt but I can move her leg up to position where they wanted it and there I'm done now here's the problem by doing that when I put the yellow background down remember we duplicated the layer so it's not a it, it, it's the other legs gonna be there so let's go in and yep, the other leg's there, just as I expected. The old leg is there on the yellow background. The new leg is where I need it to be. So what do I need to do? I need to go to the background using that great remove tool. And I can go in and remove, um, not after each stroke. I'm going to go ahead and just make this a big brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this whole leg up, all of that stuff that might be around it. And that should take care of it. Like that. So it kept the yellow background. Now, of course, if I turn off the one on the top, it's going to be a weird missing leg because I removed it. But that's what I needed to do just to remove that one part. All right, next up. Um, that was Puppet Warp. We got like seven minutes. Oh, no, we got like. Oh no, we're out of time. Let's let's switch over to the iPad. I would show you more, but I want to. I don't want to forget the iPad. All right, so let's move over to the iPad as I'm running out of time. There we are, iPad up and running, and I'm going to go ahead and launch. Even though this is not about Lightroom, I'm going to get my photo from Lightroom because Lightroom has the ability when you select the photo, you can go in and say, edit in Photoshop. So just like you would on the desktop, I'm telling it to edit this photo and it switches over to Photoshop on iPad and let me, uh, let's, lets me do it there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to, first of all, I want to show you guys, um, let me go back to my computer for a second. There's a ton of new stuff in Photoshop on the iPad. This all got released towards the end of the year. So it's got Generative Expand now, Generative Fill, Remove Tool, Camera Raw Filter, uh, Improved Color Picker, so forth and so on. You can go and read it on your own, on your own iPad. But anyway, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab that Remove Tool. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that little bit of soft box that's right there on the left side. So it's using the same Remove Tool technology that we saw over in Photoshop. Great. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my crop tool. 
and I'm going to go ahead and pull out, pull out this way, and use the same generative expand. Use the same generative expand. That should do it. No, undo. I don't know why that wouldn't let me choose generative expand. Unless it's just taking a second to come up. Hang on. We'll give it a second, but it should give me the same generative expand choices with the contextual taskbar asking me what I want to do as a prompt. But if it doesn't, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. All right, let's move on. That's just weird. Anyway, so next thing I want to do is I will go into my selection tool. I was just going to do this on a bigger image, but we'll go ahead and say select subject. It's now using the AI select subject and let's go ahead and invert that subject. And then we'll use generative fill. Something's up with my generative stuff on iPad. It's not bringing up my options. Hang on. Let's try this from scratch. I'm out of time. I'm out of time, folks. But go ahead and try it. You got generative fill, generative expand. If I weren't out of time, I would just do it right now. I'll probably record a separate video because I hate ending like this. But with that said, cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining us on my first creative kickoff. We will catch you on the next one. I'm out of time. Bye, everybody.